and today I'll be showing you an app called Procreate that along with your iPad Pro and your Apple Pencil will open all sorts of new doors for you and anyone who thought that it wasn't possible to draw digitally or paint a realistic looking still life. I'm a botanical artist and I love working with pens, pencils, and paper, but recently I've fallen in love with this digital medium because it provides a wide ray, array of pencils and brush tools um, right at your fingertips, so basically an entire studio worth of supplies in one device, which I really love. Um, as I said, we'll be working with the Apple Pencil, which is closer to any writing instrument that I've ever used before with the, any other stylus I've used before. It responds to pressure when you press on the tip, and um, it creates a very fine line as well. Today we'll be mo working mostly with value, color, and texture more so than drawing because drawing is a whole tutorial in and of itself. Um, so that's why we'll be tracing an outline before we get to painting it. So I hope you enjoy and let's begin. Your first step is to find an inspiring image. Whichever image you find, look to see if it contains a variety of colors and textures because the more interesting your subject, the more exciting your illustration you can also arrange something in front of you if you can't find a decent photograph. Using the built-in camera in your iPad, snap a photo of it. We will use this as a backdrop in the same way you use tracing paper to transfer an outline for a watercolor or colored pencil drawing. Before we begin, let's get acquainted with the main tools Procreate offers. On the right you will see five icons. If you tap on the brush, you'll see a broad selection of pens, pencils, brush strokes, and miscellaneous textures. The finger is the smudge tool, used similarly to if you were smudging pastels or charcoals. Tapping the eraser icon will open up the same selection of pencils, pens, and brushes that the brush tool offers. The layers icon enables you to create as many layers as you want and is something you should become well acquainted with, which I will explain later. Lastly, this is your color palette, which enables you to choose virtually any color you want. And this is the back button, which you will likely be using quite frequently. Now that we're familiar with the basic features, let's begin painting. First we insert our photo directly from our photo stream. We go to Tools, Insert, Insert Flat Image, Photos, and select your photo. We need to create a new layer that we will use as tracing paper. Let's find the pencil tool. I like 6B. Choose black. And then trace an outline around the main shape of the fruit. After we trace our basic shape, we move the photograph over next to our outline by choosing the photo layer, then selecting the arrow and sliding it over. Since we don't want any of the photograph to peek out through our drawing, I like to erase unnecessary sections. Here I'll choose a simple ink tool, make sure I'm on the correct layer, and erase. Next we need to isolate the shape so we can color it in without worrying about coloring outside of the lines. To do this we create a new layer which will be the underlay for the fruit. This is a very important step. Don't forget this new layer or else you will have to redo it later. Choose the masking tool and trace the outline. This may take a few attempts.
Now hit the plus button. This will create a mask around the shape so that every stroke you make will remain within the boundaries of your fruit. Now we have our basic, basic fruit body with a photo for reference right next to it. This will help guide us as we choose colors and textures for our fruit skin. To create a realistic rendering of the fruit, we will work in layers. When you look at the fruit, you immediately see that it is orange, but looking closer, you can see that there are multiple shades that vary in color. I usually make at least three layers plus a highlight to create a sense of depth. Let's search the drawing tools to see what texture matches the skin best. The soft pastel is a nice rough texture that emulates a rind, so let's choose that. The first layer, or the underlay, should be the lightest shade and the most transparent, so I'm choosing a brighter shade of orange and then decreasing the opacity. We make a basic wash of pastel. and choose our next color. I will paint directly on my underlay, but if you feel insecure about each step, add a new layer. Let's go into the color wheel and slide the cursor over until we find a color that matches the slightly darker tones in the orange. As you build layers, increase the opacity and decrease the brush stroke size. Keep working and reworking layers until you feel like you've achieved a sense of depth and accurate texture. If it doesn't look dark enough, increase the opacity or reduce the brush size to focus shadows. These stages require you to practice your understanding of tones and values, and as you learn, you'll find yourself doing a lot of trial and error. And as you add layers, you might be using this back button quite a bit. Another way of choosing a color is by placing and holding your fingertip down and that color will automatically appear on the color wheel. Once you are pleased with the basic shape of the orange, it's time to add details. Remove the isolation feature, then slide your photograph back under your drawing by selecting the photos layer, the arrow tool, and dragging the image. Then don't forget to add a new layer as you choose a pencil and outline the stem. When you are finished, move the photo back into its place next to your drawing. To work on the stem, add yet another layer and begin your underlay. Choose a brush stroke, choose a color, and I want to select an exact hue from what is available on the photograph. Reduce the opacity since this is a foundational layer. And again, make sure that your layer is on top.
Now to complete a sense of depth and realism to the fruit, you need to add highlights and shadows. Remember, if you feel insecure about these alterations, you can always add more layers so that, the later, so that later, if you want to do the highlights over, you can just delete them. Now I will add shadows. I'm adding a new layer and selecting the color in the photo, since shadows are rarely black or gray when cast on a colored object. Lastly, I want to add a shadow underneath the orange. I determine that the light source is coming from the left and plan for the shadow to be cast on the right side. Shadows should also be drawn in layers. The first layer is broader and the most transparent, becoming more opaque and concentrated as you approach the base of the fruit. Now you have a picture that you're proud of and want to save it and share. There are a few ways to do that. First, you should save it to your photo album so it is safe and you can't accidentally change it next time you open Procreate. Go to the tool menu, click Share, Share Artwork, choose whichever format you'd like, and hit Save Image. Here you can also see the list of options if you want to share it another way such as text message, iCloud, iMovie, Pinterest, etc.